Hello and welcome to LFC Focus. It is post-match reaction showtime after Liverpool have just thrown two points away at home. I don't think there's any real other way to describe what happened there. We had a 1-0 lead. We were playing well at the start of the game. We were dominating completely in the early stages and yet somehow we allowed West Brom back into that match. They it was a bit of a spawny goal, I think it's fair to say. Uh, obviously, the way it bounces off the post, bounces outside, and then the, the spin of the ball, or, or maybe it takes a touch off of Allison, who knows, but whatever. It bounces the one side of the line and then ends up the other side. It's, you know, millimetres away from Liverpool coming away with a, a respectable three points, but unfortunately, that's not what happens. West Brom get the equaliser, and... To be fair, as much as I've said it was a spawn equaliser, I don't think we have anyone to blame but ourselves. I think the way we played after those opening stages was just very, very complacent. It looked like Liverpool had almost settled too much into the rhythm of, of dominating the game. In the early stages, we were, we were blitzing West Brom. The amount of crosses that got into the box, the chances that players were having, particularly Sadio Mane, who, to be honest, could and maybe even should have had a hat-trick in the first half an hour or so, with the amount of times he received the ball with no one but the goalkeeper to beat from not too far out. I know the ball comes in quickly and he's got defenders closing him down. He's under a lot of pressure. You know, you or I probably wouldn't have scored those chances, but someone of Sadio Mane's quality, you would have expected him to put more than one of those chances away, but unfortunately he doesn't. And as I said, I think Liverpool got a little bit too comfortable. Like I said, I think at the start we were playing so fast, so quick, it was unbearable for West Brom. They simply couldn't deal with it and they looked like they were going to be on the wrong side of a hiding. You know, one thing that really, really, not just impressed me as a Liverpool supporter, but certainly worried me from a West Brom perspective, if you if you had any sympathy for them, was the amount of times Liverpool were getting into the box. You know, if you, if you want to sit deep and soak up pressure and play defensive football and, and park the bus as it were, as, as Sam Allardyce sides have become almost synonymous with you cannot be allowing the opposition to get into the box frequently that is an area that you have to do everything you can to keep them away from because once they get into that area nice and close to the goal then there isn't there's, it comes to a point where there isn't so much you can do you know if they can put in a brilliant ball have a brilliant shot a lucky bounce breaks their way or something like that and you can see the goal the most important thing is to not let the opposition into the 18 yard box with any control of the ball whatsoever and West Brom time and time and time again were allowing Liverpool to do that and that's why I think we really should have capitalised more than just the one goal in the opening stages because time and time again we were getting into threatening positions you know lads were getting into the box with the ball at their feet under control options left and right pardon me for them and simply weren't making the most of it and listen if if Liverpool went on to score another goal and win the game 2-0 or 2-1 or something like that then you would have just come away thinking well Liverpool played brilliantly at the start maybe didn't make capitalize on their domination but at the end of the day it doesn't matter but the fact of the matter is we went off the boil after that we didn't take our chances early on and we didn't seem to react to that in the right way I think we sort of settled down too much, played at quite a pedestrian place, got sucked into the way West Brom wanted the game to be played, in fairness, and I don't want to give too much credit to Sam Allardyce. I certainly don't think it's a tactical masterclass from him. I think Liverpool were definitely the architects of their own downfall. This wasn't us coming up against a Jose Mourinho side. It's not like we were up against the, the Inter Milan side that Mourinho managed, where they were virtually impossible to break down. It was a matter of when they decided you weren't scoring, you weren't scoring, and that was it. West Brom gave us opportunities. As much as they tried not to, the quality wasn't there from them, and the opportunities were there for Liverpool to, to capitalise and put the game to bed. Not just in the first half, but in the first 20 minutes or so. And we just didn't do it. And I don't mind so much when players miss the target. Like I said, Sadio Mane could have had a hat-trick in the first 20 minutes or so. He ends up only coming away with one goal. And I'll talk about the goal for a moment because it was absolutely fantastic, to be fair. Probably the one real moment of quality from back to front that Liverpool showed all game. The ball from Matip is fantastic to find Sadio Mane. Mane's first touch is brilliant. The way he takes it and the shot is just sublime. And, and it's the kind of shot that if someone else does it, you think, bloody hell, that was good. But we are kind of used to it now from Sadio Mane. Mane and Mo Salah and Firmino and all of our players to be fair we do have to kind of take a moment every now and then to step back and look at how all of these lads are world-class finishers you know there's only a handful of players in the world who are capable of, of stabbing the ball with that much power that much conviction and that much placement as Sadio Mane finding the corner with that kind of ferocity is an incredibly difficult skill especially when the ball is in the air and you're under pressure in the box so it's a brilliant brilliant goal from Sadio Mane 
But like I said, after that, Liverpool just weren't finding the net. And I can forgive moments where the players are just heading shots wide or or, or, or miskicking the ball in, in key areas like that and stuff like that. But what really irked me was when that stopped happening, when we stopped creating chance after chance, when it just became a matter of West Brom camped out in their half. We kind of, you know, threw players in their general direction, but weren't really creating anything in particular, especially once West Brom came on to us as well, late on in the first half and at various points in the second half as well. They did actually have a little bit of a go. They were clearly searching for that, that sucker punch equaliser that they eventually get. And it wasn't just counter-attacking. It wasn't just taking advantage of when we committed too many players forward. They'd have moments where they'd have a bit of possession for not for ages but there were five minute spells where it evened out a little bit and it wasn't just Liverpool having 90% of the ball or so they were putting they were committing men forward trying to create genuine chances outside of just capitalizing on on counter press situations and stuff like that and Liverpool had moments where they launched the ball forward we'd get into their half and it was pretty much four Liverpool players and four West Brom players in that half and I know that's not an easy chance uh, you, you know four on four it's still a man to a man but given how West Brom played for a lot of the game, if they're going to allow you 1v1 situations in their own half, you've got to capitalise on them. And the players that Liverpool have in their in their arsenal, people like Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino, Curtis Jones as well, who I thought got a little bit complacent towards the end of the game, didn't quite show the, the urgency that we've come to expect from him. But players like that should be able to make the most of that situation. And Liverpool just didn't today and I was saying it to the, the, my family that I was watching the match with I thought that listen if Liverpool genuinely needed a goal on around 70 80 minutes or something like that then oh, there it goes again then they probably would have got one they probably would have forced the issue because it felt like we were just playing within ourselves ever so slightly and we've seen this Liverpool team when it needs a late goal when it's really up against it they tend to just find their way through. Like I said, they force the issue. They pile so much pressure on that eventually, through sheer force of will, they manage to cause the opposition to crumble and find a way to get the ball into the back of the net. But up until West Brom equalised, I didn't see that. And maybe that's understandable because we're 1-0 up. We're thinking you don't want to overcommit and concede a goal. But the signs were there that West Brom were more than ready to, to make the sucker punch, to land that blow and to, to try and come away with a smash and grab point. So I think Liverpool did need that urgency you know a player like Oxley chamberlain who i thought was good when he came on and if he'd come on with 10 minutes more i think he would have made much more of a difference in that game there were moments when he received the ball driving forward and he played the pass first time and which was something that we didn't see from other players it sounds simple and reductive to reduce it to that kind of you know thing of oh just play the pass quickly and stuff like that but he was picking players out quickly he wasn't taking too many touches he wasn't allowing the west brom defense time to set itself and this was when we had those rare opportunities where we'd have not counter-attacked because they had left a few men back still but we had a bit more of a numbers advantage than we usually did and I've been crying out for Oxay chamberlain from the half-time point I thought that he had to get on maybe not with 45 minutes to go but certainly on the 60 minute mark 65 70 Oxay chamberlain needed to come on because of that directness that he did eventually offer us but because he only comes on with 10 minutes to go after the goal's been scored as well which means that the game does change ever slightly West Brom play within themselves once again they go back to being defensive they look to defend what they already have and it becomes 10 times more difficult for Oxay chamberlain or anyone else on the pitch to break them down but I thought if he was on on, on 70 or something like that or hopefully earlier, but even at that point, I would have backed him to to create something that, that would have pulled the West Brom defence apart, created a little bit more space for the other attackers on the pitch as well, and either scored a goal himself or, or set it up for someone else. And listen, this is all hindsight's 2020, and I don't, I don't want to say that, you know, I know better than Jurgen Klopp, because if I was on that touchline, I would have chucked Oxlade Chamberlain on a, a little bit earlier than he did. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp knows more than any of us do about football. That's why he's on the touchline, and I'm stood in front of a camera talking to you guys about the game as much as I do love doing this, of course. But um, I do think that we just, everyone got a little bit complacent. Everyone kind of settled on that one nil and thought, ah, these are rubbish. And West Brom did have chances earlier on in the game that they spurned, you know, shots that they shanked wide and stuff like that. And I think that does get into our heads. You sort of feel like you can allow them a bit more time on the ball. You can allow them a shot from outside the box and stuff like that because they simply aren't that good. And you'll generally get away with them. Anyone who has played football will know that. You know, if, if you reduce the opposition to shooting from outside the box or from, from half chance positions and stuff like that, generally you think, you know what, we're, we're happy for that to carry on because we're not conceding any serious chances. 
but we just let West Brom stay in the game for far too long. It's all right if they get a little bit of a second wind and a bit of a rush and they suddenly all burst up the pitch and catch you by surprise and have five minutes where they really go for it. But there was a suspended, suspe uh, an extended period in sorry, the second half where they just kept going. They kept having moments where they push players up the pitch. They'd go through motions. They'd sit back for a bit, conserve their energy, come forward for five minutes and pile men forward and create chances. And Liverpool never quite took that seriously until after West Brom scored, by which point there's 10 minutes left for them. From their perspective, they'd scored at the perfect time. It was far too late, really, even for a team of, of Liverpool's calibre and Liverpool's ability to find goals when it matters most to really make any difference. And as a result... We, we have dropped two points. As I said at the top of the video, this is not a point gained for Liverpool. As much as you can say, you know, difficult part of the season in the middle of December, congested fixtures and whatnot. It's a Sam Allardyce side coming to Anfield. We know what their blueprint is. We know they're going to be tough to break down. But on the evidence of the 90 minutes today, that is a game that Liverpool, by any stretch of the imagination, no matter how optimistic or cynical you are, wherever you fall on that scale, Liverpool should have won that game. And to come away with just one point, on a weekend where some of our rivals are drop points as well. You know, Spurs have still got to play. Man City play Everton tomorrow, which is a win-win situation either way. Liverpool have lost the opportunity to take some serious initiative here. Man U and Leicester dropping points as well. This was a chance to pull away from the pack a little bit. And it's one thing that I have noticed other managers doing. They often have been saying, especially over the last few days, Lampard said it after the Arsenal game, we missed the chance to go second. There's people talking about, oh, this team has got the chance to go second in the league. And that's a position that Liverpool want to put everyone else in, where the big prize that you're playing for is not the top of the table, but to be the team that is not the that is as close to Liverpool as you can possibly get. And if we keep getting results like that, then things are very quickly going to flip on their heads, and we're going to get drawn back in with the rest of the chasing pack, and that is absolutely what we don't want. But to finish on a positive note, as the great Bill Shankly once said, here we are with problems at the top of the league. Liverpool are still... Top of the tree, for now at least, of course, plenty will be happening over the coming days. The games are coming on a day-by-day -day basis. As I said, you've got Spurs to come this evening. You've got Man City playing Everton in 24 hours' time as well. Everything is going to change very, very quickly. And the most important thing is that Liverpool put this result behind them as soon as possible. Get the required three points against Newcastle on the 30th and put us back on track in our quest for yet another Premier League title. But until then... That has been all for the post-match reaction video. I hope, even though most of you probably didn't enjoy the match, that you did at least get some catharsis from this reaction video. Let me know all of your thoughts on the game and how it played out down in the comments below. Apart from that, don't forget to hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel in the past. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter, and I'll be back very soon with the pre-match content for that game against Newcastle. Until then, bye for now.